So, hi all, thanks for joining the very last presentation here. Um, so what's hidden behind this daring title? I want to spend the first half of this presentation talking about uh, some of the core concepts in Kubernetes that are supposed to help you as an administrator or as a user to keep your workload up and running, no matter what happens. And in the second half of the talk, I will uh, be talking about node network configuration in Kubernetes, and I will focus on a safe network configuration. So let's start. You all know this uh, logo. Um, Kubernetes is an or orchestration tool that helps you run your continuous workloads. And this workload is usually running on multiple nodes. And even more importantly, this workload is not running on a laptop or a phone of your user, meaning that if anything goes bad with the servers that you run on or with the network that's connecting these servers, the user may end up offline. So how do we prevent that? Well, let's illustrate it on a couple of examples. So here we have a node. And on the node, we have a pod, which is the smallest uh, unit of workload in Kubernetes. And we have a user. This user is using our application running in the pod. And you can tell that they are quite happy. But then something terrible happens with the node and the user loses their connectivity. The application is not reachable anymore and they are upset. So how do we prevent this? If the issue was a single po point of failure uh, of our single node, let's throw more nodes in the cluster. And since we have multiple nodes, let's include a control plane node that will manage them, that will manage all the pods and keep the nodes healthy. And now to leverage our new nodes, we create something called deployment, which is a simple way in Kubernetes how to run your application in multiple instances. Uh, what it does, it deploys your pod uh, how many times you want. If it sees that there are more replicas than you asked for, it will kill some. If there is uh, less of them, it will create a new one. Um, so we kind of solved the issue with a single point of failure, but we have a new one and that's which of these pods should be now accessed by the user. Um, for the user, they just want to get to the application. They don't care about how many pods you're running in the cluster. So to solve this issue, Kubernetes introduces something called service, which is an abstraction of a service. Uh, what it does is um, it serves as a single entry point with a virtual IP address and a domain name that the user accesses to. And then and the request is then forwarded to one of the bots implementing the service. So now the user is happy. Uh, the traffic is getting load balanced to our health bots. And say now one of them crashes again. Uh, you see that the user is still happy because uh, the liveness probe of this bot uh, was uh, started failing, and the service noticed that the, one of the pods that it interfaces to is down, so it will serve on, it will dispatch all the traffic only to the one healthy pod from now on. Um, and then, thanks to our deployment, we start a new pod to have two of them, and the service picks it up and forwards traffic there. And finally, the failed pod is getting deleted. So it looks good so far, but you may have noticed that by what, while I was solving one issue of a single point of failure of our worker, I introduced a new one, which was the control plane. We have only one instance of that. So what happens if that crashes? Well, we will lose uh, our deployment, but you see from the slide that the user is still communicating with our pods. Um, that's because Kubernetes proves to be quite bulletproof here. Um, if it loses the control plane, it enters something, uh, it enters a read-only mode, meaning you cannot create a new pods, the deployment cannot do its job, but the workload running in those pods is still running, the service is still serving, and um, as long as these two pods stay alive, you're good. Um, so if you are okay with this little downtime uh, until you fix this control plane node, you should be uh, good to go with this kind of setup. 
but we will stop here. I want to make the control plane highly available as well. So applying the similar process, I will throw in more nodes for the control plane. Each of them runs a single instance of the API server and the at CD uh, that serves as a distributed storage. Now, how do we handle the high availability here? For the at CD part, uh, all of these instances are able to serve at any point of time. You can read from them and you can write to these um, storages of databases. Um, for the write though, you need to make sure that at least more than half of these instances are alive so they can vote and allow the, the new data to be stored. Uh, if your count of the etcd instances drops below the half of them, then the cluster again enters the read-only mode. Um, for the API server, again, we have uh, several instances of the same service here. Um, so we have to solve the same issue as we uh, did with pods, and that's how we need to balance the, the incoming traffic to all of these and make sure that if one of them goes down, uh, the other two can continue serving uh, the requests. And that's done similar to the service using virtual IP address and load balancers. I won't get into details of this. But with all this, we have kind of a healthy, um, highly available in most cluster. All right, um, now let's change the topic a little bit. I will talk about the uh, network configuration. If you managed to space out uh, in uh, the previous 10 minutes, now is the time to wake up. Um, so um, let's get to it. So uh, I will try to illustrate why do we want to configure the host networking and what can go wrong on a simple example again. Here we have three nodes. Each of them has a single network interface connected to the central switch, which is then connected to the outside network, but it uh, doesn't matter here too much. And finally, each of these nodes has a handful of pods running, and these pods are communicating, com sorry, communicating over the default interface, and everything looks fine. But say we uh, start more pods on these nodes, as many as can fit there. Um, if they generate enough traffic, it may be uh, an issue for our network interface, which doesn't have enough throughput uh, to carry all this traffic. Um, so applying the same logic as for the high availability, we introduce a new network interface uh, to these nodes. And to make sure that they are equally utilized, we aggregate them using a bonding interface, uh, which is a way to aggregate multiple network interfaces to either increase the throughput or provide some active backup uh, safety mechanisms. And now you can see that since we increase the throughput uh, or the possible throughput, all these spots can communicate over the network. So um, this is quite good, but if we made a single mistake, we could have ended up like this. Um, and to illustrate what can go wrong, let me show you a very primitive way of configuration of these bondings. And it's just an SSH running a script uh, on the cluster. If you don't know IP tools, don't worry, I will get through the whole uh, setup line by line. So here we have to, we first have to connect to the nodes, or we use SSH to do that. Um, and then we run a set of IP uh, link commands. First, we need to bring the original management interface ET0 down so we can reconfigure it. And this is the, the first problematic point because as soon as we bring it down, we lose the management network. Um, and if any of the following commands uh, fail, then we lose this management network forever unless you use console to connect back to the host and revive uh, the configuration, but they may be quite troublesome. Um, but let's pretend everything is okay here and continue to the next line. So we create this virtual uh, interface a bond of type bond. We attach both of our network interfaces to it and we bring up all the both interfaces and the bonding. So now we formed this uh, virtual interface with both of its ports. And finally, um, 
In the original setup, the ETH0 served as the management interface and it carried the default IP address. But as soon as we attached it to our bond link, it lost uh, its IP address. So now we need to configure it again, but this time on the bond link. We use a DHCP client to do so. Um, and here comes this second issue uh, or uh, pain point. And that's that if we don't manage to get an IP address again, uh, the host will end up offline. And if we do get an IP address, but it's a different one than we used to have, then the node won't recover properly. Um, and the first issue, I guess, is if you make a typo in it, any of this, you are again in trouble. Um, these are all the issues, but um, what another one would be that this is not really what we are used to in Kubernetes, right? What we are used to is something like this, which you call kubectl apply and some um, YAML file. And this is exactly what Kubernetes NM states project, which uh, logos, uh, which logo you saw in the previous slides, uh, does. It provides a Kubernetes native way of configuring the networking in a kind of a declarative manner. Um, so let's illustrate how it works on an example again. So here we have our three nodes. Each of them has an instance of NM state which is communicating with the local network manager to obtain the network, um, the network status and also to write the configuration uh, back to the host. And again, each of these nodes has to interface ETH0 and ETH1. Now, the first feature of NM state is that it reports the state of the network as a Kubernetes object. Uh, let's call it state here. And the state would then contain the list of the interfaces we have available. Here it's ETH0 that's up now and ETH1 that's currently down. It does it for every single node in the cluster. And you can use this information to just figure out what interfaces are available to integrate with some kind of automation or monitoring tools. Um, the counterpart of reporting is configuration. This is driven by a policy object where we declare the desired state of the network uh, on all the hosts that match uh, this policy. So here we declare the policy that says we want a interface of type bond uh, called bond one, and it should have two ports, ETH0 and ETH1. Now, when you apply this configuration, NM state will create an enactment object where each node in the cluster. And this is then used to monitor the progress of the configuration and also to debug any issues. Now, here you can see that we have this central enactment in progress while the one on the left and on the right are pending. This is a first safety mechanism of NM state where we apply the configuration on, the, on one node at the time. And by doing that, we make sure that if the configuration is disruptive for the network connectivity, it won't take down all the nodes at once. Um, so let's get into the configuration itself now. The enactment is progress, NM state uh, does its, its thing, and it creates the bonding interface over these two network interfaces, ETH0 and ETH1. Now, uh, the configuration succeeded, but we don't stop here. Uh, we we do it. Now we get to the second safety mechanism, which is the connectivity check. We want to make sure that after the configuration of the host is finished, we still have connectivity to the default gateway, to the DNS server, and to the Kubernetes API server to confirm that the node is still healthy and member of the cluster. If we wouldn't get a response back, then the configuration of the node, the bonding would be uh, removed and the default interface would be again, uh, the ETH zero. Uh, but in this case, uh, our ping got response and we committed the configuration on the node. And then we continue the, to the node on left, we configure it and to the node on right. It's worth mentioning that if the configuration on one of these nodes failed, 
uh, we wouldn't continue configuring all the other ones. We treat every single configuration as a can canary test. And if it fails, we just abort the whole rollout of the configuration. Okay, um, that was kind of a, the process in pictures, but we are probably more familiar with kubectl and manifest. So let's illustrate the same, same process uh, using these tools. So if you want to read the current node network state, you would call kubectl get nns and the name of node, nns being a short for node network state. And here there is a stripped down example of a node network state. It has a name matching the name of the node. It has a list of interfaces, uh, ETH0 with uh, its IP address and ETH1, which is down. If you call this on a real cluster, you would also see many other interfaces, the DNS configuration, default gateways, and much more. So now for the configuration part, we would call kubectl apply, and then we apply an object of kind node network configuration policy, NNCP in short. It has an arbitrary name and the declaration of the desired state. Here, we want the bonding, uh, we want to bond interface ct 0 and 1, and the mode of the bonding is uh, balance round robin, which should uh, balance the traffic uh, evenly uh, across both of the ports. Um, this API that we use in the Kubernetes NM state is directly taken from the NM state project, uh, which is not bound to Kubernetes. Um, if you want to learn more about it, just search for it, I guess. Uh, it may be very useful if you are dealing with a configuration of individual nodes and you want to do it in a declarative manner. Um, so we applied the desired configuration of the bonding, and now we want to monitor the progress using node network configuration enactment, or NNC in short. Um, as soon as we call it, we get this issue, uh, unable to connect to the server, which is where you should, when you should start panicking. We somehow got disconnected for, we are not able to connect anymore to the API server, which uh, sounds like trouble. Fortunately, after a couple of minutes, you can try it again, called the get NNCE, and you see that the connection is back. Uh, the configuration of the first node failed, and the two other nodes just aborted the operation and never attempted to configure it. So this is the, the rollout and the canary testing uh, practice. So now let's see why uh, did the configuration fail. So to do that, you can get the details of the node network configuration enactment. And in the message, it would tell us uh, something like this, uh, basically saying that we were not able to uh, find a default gateway after the configuration was finished. Um, that sounds like IP configuration issue. So let's review our policy, uh, what was wrong here. This is the original one uh, I previously applied. And you may remember that on the original setup, the ETA0 was the default uh, network interface, keeping the default IP address, the management IP address. And we forgot to include any IP address configuration in this, uh, in this declared state. So we can fix it by simply saying that this uh, bond interface should have uh, IPv4 enabled and use DHCP to obtain an IP address. Now, when I apply this configuration and call get NNCE to monitor the progress. You can see that it's successfully configured on the first node. It's currently progressing on the second, and the third one is just waiting in line. And eventually, it should configure all the nodes. So that was for the current state of Kubernetes NM state and what features are available there. Now. Kubernetes NM state has many more features and supports many more uh, types of interfaces to configure, but it lacks uh, a little bit on the safety side of things. First of all, we are currently working on a rollout control API where you would be able to say that you want to, you don't want to configure in one node at a time, but you want to uh, take groups of them and configure them in chunks. Now, 
This may be important if you have a huge cluster where rolling out the configuration node by node may take long minutes or hours. And it's not always necessary to uh, be to do it one by one in case your desired configuration is not really breaking the network. Now, the second uh, missing feature uh, for safety would be node draining. Uh, what we do currently is when you are configuring a node, we don't touch the running pods at all. We leave them running uh, on the node, which means that they may lose their connectivity for a bit. Or it, it, that shouldn't be an issue if you run them in multiple instances, but it's can we want to strive for uh, an excellence here and we want to make this better by draining all the running uh, pods from the node before we start the configuration there. So they get time to gracefully shut down and start on a different node. And only then we attempt to reconfigure the node and potentially break the network connectivity there. So uh, to wrap up, in the first half, we talked about the core concepts of Kubernetes that uh, allow you to keep your containerized uh, workload uh, highly available and to keep your clusters highly available as well. And in the second half, uh, I talked about the Kubernetes NMC project, its API and safety mechanisms that should help you not to destroy your cluster and break the connectivity there.